There are a few ways to do this problem. One way is to simplify what's under the radical. 5 squared is 25. So I would have the square root of 25, and the square root of 25 is 5. So that's the answer. Another way, if you have a square root and a squared, those are inverse operations. So they undo each other, leaving you with just 5. The same thing happens here. You can cross out the square root and the squared because those are inverse operations and they undo each other. So the answer here would just be x. Another way to think about this, if you changed forms like we did last class period, you would have this in the numerator of an exponent and then the square root would have a 2 in the denominator of the exponent. So you'd have x raised to the 2 over 2 power or x to the first power. Again, our answer being x. Just another way to think about it. Similarly here, the third root is the inverse operation of cubing something, so those two will cancel each other out, leaving us with just x. Another way to think about this is x to the 3 over 3 power, this 3 going in the numerator, this 3 going in the denominator, which would be x to the first power, or just x. Again, same answer. Third root of x to the ninth. Uh, I would use the strategy where you change forms, although there's other ways to think about this. So change to exponential form, so this 9 would be the numerator of your exponent, and this 3 would be the denominator of your exponent x to the 9 thirds, 9 thirds reduces to 3, so this is x to the third power. Another way of thinking about that is what times itself three times makes x to the 9th? And it's x to the third. x to the third times itself three times, or raised to the third power, you multiply exponents, would give you x to the 9th. Sometimes you can simplify square roots. Whenever you have something under a radical sign or underneath a square root sign, you can split that up. I'll show you an example here. I'm going to change root 48 into root 16 times root 3. 16 times 3 is 48. I've just split this up into two different pieces. Now, how does this help me? Well, I know that the square root of 16 is 4. So I can replace this with a 4. So my simplified version would be 4 times the square root of 3, or 4 root 3. Notice the 4 is not a little 4. It's not uh, the fourth root of 3. It's actually 4 times the square root of 3. We're going to use that fact over here, too. We can split this up however we want it, since everything's multiplied together. So I'm going to take the 18 and factor out any perfect squares. 9 is a perfect square that divides into 18. So I'll split this up into root 9 and root 2. And then I'll split the x squared up. And watch what I do with the y to the third. I'm going to split that up into y squared times y. So I'm just taking all of this and splitting it up into separate roots. Now, a lot of these pieces can now simplify. I can, I know that root 9 is really 3. I know that the square root of x squared is really plain old x. And the square root of y squared is really plain old y. These pieces don't simplify. So then I'll just collect all my answers here. I've got a 3, x, y, and then I still have the square root of 2y, so I'll put those back together underneath the square root. So my answer is 3xy times the square root of 2y. The third root of 8x to the seventh. Again, I'm going to split this up. The third root of 8 simplifies nicely, so I'll take that apart. And then watch how I split this one. I'm going to split out the third root of x to the sixth 
And then that'll leave me with the third root of x. x to the sixth times x equals x to the seventh. Now I know that the third root of, of uh, x to the sixth is really x squared. Look up here if you need uh, help with that. The third root of 8 is really 2. 2 times itself, 3 times is 8. So then my answer will be 2 x squared times the cube root of x. To add and subtract radicals, I, I do this very similar to the way I would do a problem with x's in it. For example, this first problem, it almost reminds me of the problem 3x plus 5x. If you had 3x plus 5x, you'd say, okay, 3x plus 5x, those are like terms, so I can add them. So I get 8x. Watch how the x just follows along almost like a label. The same thing is true here. If you have the roots, you can almost treat like an x. 3 root 7 plus 5 root 7 makes 8 root 7 when we are adding. So this 2 root 5 minus 6 root 5, it's almost like saying 2x minus 6x. You get negative 4x since they're like terms. This is similar. 2 root 5 minus 6 root 5 gives us negative 4 root 5. Again, this is not the fourth root. This 4 isn't little here. It's 4 times the square root of 5. So if you have 5 root 2 plus 6 root 3, that's almost like having 5x plus 6y. If you don't have like terms, you can't add them. So since my root 2 and root 3 are not the same, I cannot add these together. This is as simple as it gets. 5 root 2 plus 6 root 3, that would be your answer. You'd think the same thing would happen down here. Root 48 and root 12, they're not like terms, as we say, so they can't be added. But we can actually try to simplify both of these roots. Root 48, I see that that has a factor of 16. So just like on the previous page, I'm going to split that up. I'm going to make root 48 into root 16 times root 3. Then I know that root 16 is really 4. So root 48 can be simplified to 4 times the square root of 3, 4 root 3. Okay. Similarly, root 12 can be split up into the perfect square root 4 times root 3, right? 4 times 3 makes 12. And I know that root 4 is really equal to 2. So this is the same thing as 2 root 3. Well, now look, I now I have like terms. I have root 3's at the end. So 4 root 3 plus 2 root 3 makes 6 root 3. And that's our answer. When multiplying radicals, as long as the radicals are the same, for example, here we have a third root, you can multiply together what is underneath the radicals. So uh, third root of 4 times third root of 4 would be the third root of 4 times 4, which is 16. Now you have to check if this simplifies at all. Are there any perfect cubes that could divide out of 16 that would simplify? Well, the cube root of 8 divides out of there, and we know what the cube root of 8 is. So we'll have the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 2. So I've split that 16 up into 8 times 2. Now I know that the cube root of 8 is 2. 2 times itself 3 times makes 8. So my answer is 2 times the cube root of 2. So this problem. I can, since I have both square roots here and everything's multiplied together, there's no adding or subtracting, I can just multiply everything in here times everything in here so I can just combine it all together. So I'll get the square root of 18 x to the fourth y to the fifth. Now 
Now let's see if that simplifies. Remember, we can break up that 18x to the fourth y to the fifth in any way that we want so that uh, if we can simplify the square roots at all. So for example, 18, I can break that up into the square root of 9 and the square root of 2. I do that because the square root of 9 will simplify. And x to the fourth, that simplifies. As long as I have an even power under there, the square root will simplify it by changing forms. And I'm going to split up the y to the fifth into y to the fourth times y. So let's see what all simplifies here. The no, root 9 will turn into a 3. Root 2 does not simplify. Square root of x to the fourth gives me x squared. Square root of y to the fourth gives me y squared. So my answer will be 3x squared, y squared. And then I have a 2 and a y under the root yet. So times the square root of 2y. I'm going to do the distributive property on these radicals just like I would if there were variables in there. So square root of 2 times square root of 8, just multiply the 2 and the 8, you get square root of 16. And then minus square root of 6. Now you want to see if this simplifies at all. I see that square root of 16, I know that's really 4, regular 4. So I have 4 minus root 6 as my answer. Before we do this last one, I have a couple more problems that I want to do. So pause the video and write down these two problems. When you're multiplying 4 root 3 times 8 root 2, you can combine together the regular numbers and the roots. So here we would have, let's see, 4 times 8 is 32, and then root 3 times root 2 would be root 6. So the answer here would be 32 root 6. Root 6 cannot simplify at all. I'm going to talk about this one a couple different ways. First, let's talk about it like we did up here. If you have 4 times 5, that'll be 20. Put your regular numbers together and then put your roots together. Root 3 times root 3 makes root 9. So I have 20 times root 9. But wait a second, we know that root 9 is really just regular 3. So we really have 20 times 3, which is 60. Now there's a shortcut here. When you're multiplying, again, 4 times 4, you'd get 20. And sometimes when you have root 3 times root 3, that's the same as root 3 squared. When you square a square root, it undoes each other. So whenever you have root 3 times root 3, you're going to get regular 3, just like we had here, giving you 60. So either way you want to think about that. Okay, so let's go back down here. Again, we're going to distribute. We have four terms here, 2 root 5, negative 3, 3 root 5, and 4. So we're going to distribute. 2 times 3 will be 6, and root 5 times root 5 makes regular 5. So that's 6 times 5 is the first term, or 30. Then distribute here, 2 root 5 times 4. That'll be plus 8 root 5. Then we'll distribute our negative 3, so that will be minus 9 root 5. And negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. So then let's collect our like terms. We've got 30 and negative 12, so that'll give us 18. And plus 8 root 5 and minus 9 root 5 makes negative 1 root 5 or negative root 5. So there's our answer. Eight minus root 5.